Greetings from Dystopia, <laughs> episode 12, day 101 of the streak, 3.06 miles today on muddy damn trails. Um, I don't know why, it's 41 degrees out right now, it's so much cooler today, but I was sweating like a pig, my hair is soaking wet. Um, so we're going to wait till I'm going to wipe off my my watch. Wipe the funk off of my watch. <laughs> it was a good, good run today. Um, like I said, the trails are muddy. I didn't pass anybody on the trail, but as I drove around to park over here, I park out on the main highway and then walk up the old road just because it avoids, avoids this initial mud hole that's over here where the mountain bikers have torn up the trail because it's straight off the end of the parking lot and they were hitting it full speed and just wore a rut down into the clay. Um, got all my steps today. <laughs> Obviously, if you're running. Got all my altitude changes. Um, what did I do today? The equivalent of 26, I think it is. 26 flights of stairs. Oh no, 36 flights of stairs. 10,382 steps. Burn 1,700 calories. Uh, that don't sound right. I gotta look at this later. Sometimes I don't trust this watch. Sometimes it does really good. Other times on the calorie burn. I don't know. I don't quite buy it, but it's probably close enough. Obviously, I'm running at a deficit. Like I was talking about, because I'm still losing weight. <laughs> Wait till tomorrow. Um, I commented yesterday on Facebook that I stepped on the scale, even you know against my own rule. I stepped on the scale yesterday and was like, "What the?" F <laughs> um, yeah, dropped a little bit more. That's good. It's always good. Um, There's been a lot of debate. The CDC was talking about covering your mouth when you're out in public. Um, Buff, the company, has come out and said, no, don't use our product as a face filter. I will guarantee you that that is their lawyer speaking for the basic purpose of going out, going shopping, something like this is more than adequate to go through the store. All you're worried about is what you're spitting out, not what they're spitting out. That's it. Just like I've commented multiple times, wash the nasty things. <laughs> you don't want it to look like this one. Um, and that's not bad. It's just blood stains from a nosebleed. I get nosebleeds quite often, um, and that's usually the first one, the closest one at hand. So, anyway, <laughs> it's no big deal. I got a capillary bundle in there that needs to be cauterized. Um, it's been done before, and I need to get it done again. Um, usually flares up in the winter. Makes it worse in the winter, I should say. Anyways, <laughs> not that you needed to know that. Um, hope everybody's well. I'm not going to spend a tremendous amount of time today ranting. Oh, I was going to look at my notes, but I'm recording on my phone today, and my notes are on the phone. Um, yeah, I went a little over time yesterday, and I promised you guys to keep them under 30 minutes, so I'll give you guys a little bit of a break today. Um, if you want, you can share the videos. It's fine with me. Just share them from the YouTube page, not from Facebook, because... My posts are not set for friends of friends, so only you can see my posts. And if you share it, odds are it's going to come up blank unless they're a mutual friend. Um, so if you want, you can just go to YouTube, copy the link and share that, or hit the share button on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you like it. Um, I hate doing that, I hate being the that guy. The subscribe, you'll get a notification when I post a new one. Granted, I put them up all the time. 
on my page, but if I stop posting them to Facebook and only post to YouTube, you wouldn't know a new episode was out unless you subscribe. So that's your option. Like it, comment on it. The likes just tell me if I'm doing good or bad. Um, I've had no complaints yet. Um, a couple direct private messages on Facebook. I'll, um, so far, it seems like everybody likes the hero shot at the beginning. Um, that was, like I said the other day, that was my daughter's idea. Um, she likes the hero shot, and we're all familiar with them for... Like, the, I was having to explain to someone what the, the hero shot is. and It's like, if you watch a John Wick movie, there's like 45 or 50 hero shots throughout the movie. Um, throughout the movies. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of like them. They're fun to make because I have to stop. What I do is I'm doing them where I've had a big uphill, then there's a downhill and a quick uphill where it's a long downhill and a quick uphill. So it gives me the rest when I come down and go up the hill, I set up the camera and then I walk back up and then turn around and run through the shot and then edit it down. Um, it just, it amuses her and they're actually starting to amuse me because today's hero shot, I went past the spot and I'm like, hey, that's actually a pretty good shot because of the way I come around and go by the camera. Um, so I'm having a little bit of fun doing those. It's something different, especially if I have to make myself do one every day. It's uh, a little bit of variety to keep the brain brain focused. Um, there was a direct message question, private message question on trail running. Um, can you do it in your normal running shoes? Um, if not, what are things to look for? I would not recommend doing it in running shoes, particularly if you're running in muddy or wet, damp trails. Um, you will slide all over the place with street shoes. Um, I can take off one of these here. Ooh, they are a little muddy, so that's living proof what the trail was like today. You should see my pants. Um... <laughs> I wish I had a clean one. Things to look at in a trail running shoes. These are the Ultra Lone Peak 4. Um, it's actually my favorite shoe so far. I've gone through two pairs of these, a pair of a Solo Sword trail runner, and I forgot what the other trail running shoe was. The a Solo was a good shoe. The problem I had was the rock plate, which I'll explain in a minute, broke on both shoes. Um, and that rock plate is critical when you're running on trails. So just things to look for. Number one is a really good grip, a really good sole. These are actually starting to wear, especially towards the ball of the foot. Um, the heel wear is actually really good on these. They have an extra little flap here on the back that provides a little bit of impact, additional cushioning when your foot comes down to the ground. It allows the heel to compress down nice and even. Um, a good trail runner is going to have a good grip on the bottom, good sole. It's going to have a fairly... <laughs> I just got mud on my fingers going to have a fairly stiff sole at the bottom half. The reason that it's so stiff is I'm trying to find there. Okay, so there's the marker. It's actually written on the side of the shoe. You can't really see it. Um, huh. That finger had no mud on it. <laughs> there's the writing right there. But there is a rock plate, which is a hard plastic plate which extends from just about the heel to the front leading edge of the arch of your foot. It is a solid plastic plate. Reason being, if you come down on a rock, you're not going to drive it into the arch of your foot. If you've ever done that, you know how bad that hurts. Um, so I ran 
all my shoes before were a 10 millimeter or eight millimeter drop from the heel to the ball of the foot. The heel was placed eight millimeters or 10 millimeters higher. The ultras are a zero drop. So your heel is at the exact same height as the ball of your foot. So it's, you're walking barefoot essentially. Flat foot on the ground, just like you would if you were barefoot. The ultras actually feature a wider toe box. This is significantly, a normal shoe would probably be right about here. Um, uh, they're all the way in the back. I do have a normal pair of shoes. Um, so it's a wider foot, a wider foot bed. So your foot is laid flat out and it allows your toes to splay as though you were walking more natural. Um, I've constantly had problems with the metatarsals in my feet running um, in a conventional shoe. Going to the zero drop got rid of my arch and my heel pain. Going to the wider toe box got rid of my metatarsal pain. So there's been a huge benefit to switching to these shoes. Um, I got two pair for my birthday. You guys probably saw the box. Or the boxes when I posted it. So the best birthday presents this year were from my daughter and my bestie. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to put my shoe back on without untying it. I hate doing that, but I don't want to get my feet any muddier than I have to. So yeah, the zero drop shoe, like I said, solved a lot of problems for me. And my feetsies are happy. I have the little ball, which I posted. Um, I forgot the brand name off the top of my head, but it has a bunch of little knobs, bumps on it. And so after a run, I'll go home and I roll, put my foot on that ball and just roll my foot back and forth over the ball. And that is like, oh, it's the best thing in the world. Um, so yeah, a good pair of shoes that are made for trail running. Don't run in hiking boots. You can run in boots. Um, I would not recommend starting off on them. If you do run in boots, transition to them slowly. Wear them out one day. Wear shoes for a couple days. Wear the boots again for a day or two. Back to the shoes. Eventually extending the time that you run in boots. Um, I think because of the military I'm quite used to running in boots look for the rock plate if you're switching to zero drops and you've never ran in a zero drop shoe same rule applies as switching to boots walk with them run with them a day wear your normal shoes walk with them run with them run with them mix it up and gradually get used to or acclimatize acclimate to Try and keep an eye on my time here to the zero drop shoe because you've spent most of your life in a more elevated position with the heel in the shoe so now you're switching to flat and just think about it if you ran barefooted how that would hurt and it's the same concept for me I initially had a little bit of problem in my calf um, running in the zero drop three four days it was back to normal um, after about a week of running in them, like I said, all my metatarsal pain was gone. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing. Um, you shouldn't feel much pain after exercise. Excuse me. <laughs> after exercise. I'm going to wave so I can take out that belt. You shouldn't be in pain after you exercise. The idea here is you're not out to kill yourself, you're out to better yourself. No pain, no gain, it does apply a little bit to muscle work because to build muscle you have to damage muscle, you have to tear muscle and that's what happens is you tear the fibers and they heal up and they get bigger and bulkier and stronger. Um, like you guys saw the picture of my calf, which is still one of the weirdest requests I think I've had to date was uh let me see your calves let's see what your calves look like i don't know i'm sure some of the women have had guys go i want to see your toes you know it's probably the, probably the same 
mentality. But no, I get it. You want to see the the muscular changes. Um, so yeah, make sure you got good shoes. Shoes that are made for trail running. I cannot stress that enough. A rock plate is critical. Um, some companies call it a shank, but you don't want to steel shank. You need a little bit of flex in it. So the plastic or nylon plates work pretty well. I think one brand actually has a thin carbon fiber plate. I want to say it's Innovate, I-N-O-V, number eight. Um, but I'm not 100% sure. The Innovate shoes will probably be my next migration. Um, they are significantly more expensive, but the sole, the outer edges of the sole are made of graphene, which is a slightly stiffer rubbery plastic. It's a much better traction on trail run. Um, but until you're stable on your legs, you're used to your balance, um, probably not a good idea. We, uh, I keep wanting to do, to eat here, but all right, so your shoes. We talked about your shoes. Stretching. Stretching is critical, especially in trail running. You're not doing this, you know, consistent movement. One step might be wider than the other because you're going to step over an obstacle. Or you're shifting your legs from left to right to go to swing around a rock or a small stump, um, which is really common up here. Um... So yeah, make sure you stretch, stretch out good. We can go over stretches in another video. The really simple ones, I will walk on my the balls of my feet, so up on your tippy toes, 15 to 20 out, 15 to 20 back. I will, holding the car, rise up on my calves, you know, on my toes to stretch my calves out. I will invert it, then walk on my heels, 15 to 20 steps out, 15 to 20 steps back. Same thing, rises on your heels, rocking on your heel. Um, do your all your lower body stretches like you would. Bend to stretch your lower to upper back. It's important because you're going to be doing a lot of additional movement, so you need to get those stretches in to make sure that you're limbered up. Warm up. Typically, I walk five to ten minutes, and then I'll kick it up to a shuffle. I do a quick sprint, slow down, and then walk the rest of the way up to the actual turn I make on this trail. So it's about a 15-minute warm-up to the trail where I take off running off of the old pavement. Um, and again, walk the uphills, run the flats, run the downhills. Don't, it's not a flat out run. I typically do, like I said, a, an airborne shuffle. Um, it's anywhere between a nine to an 11 minute mile. Um, don't be in a hurry, <laughs> especially when you're starting out. Um, trekking poles, trekking poles are a good idea. Make sure that you get trekking poles that A, can support your body weight and B, have a running foot trekking poles um, they are a good idea for stability for shifting your weight as you jump around or over an obstacle it's good for stability as you go over particularly in this preserve here um, there's a lot of trees that have fallen and the mountain bikers have put logs up against it to build a ramp so when I cross those I use those for stability as I go over the ramp um, Quick things to think about with a trekking pole. So mine, I'm using the Lucky Rocks Light. There are two different versions of this particular one. One has a cork grip. This one has a neoprene hard rubber style grip. I prefer this one. Um, things to keep in mind when you... There's, diff, there's only one way to use the strap. Your instinct is because this is the way the strap hangs to put your hand through it and go like that and then grab the grip. If you drop the pole or the pole slips out of your hand, you're going to jam your wrist in it 
potentially if you are like this with your thumb over it and it slips like that you're going to dislocate your thumb the proper grip is to hold the tracking pole bring your hand up underneath it through and over so now the pole is around the lower part of your wrist with the angle coming up this is the proper way to grip a trekking pole again the grip comes from the bottom through over the top and then grab it don't go through it this way you're gonna break your wrist you're gonna dislocate your thumb um, I what I started to say earlier is so I have the mud cup on here the mud basket I am still using the uh, carbon tip on there if I can get it to focus the carbon tips are okay if you're conscious of what you're doing if you find your mind drifting <laughs> you're gonna plant this thing sooner or later in the ground and it's going to stick because that carbon will drive its way pretty much into any surface um, there is a runner's foot that can screw onto here. It makes a small little hook type foot. I don't have them with me. Um, I would recommend that you use the running foot. Um, so yeah, trekking poles are a good idea. Again, when you're running, take your time. <laughs> Learn to use the trekking poles. It's much like a, they should be planted with the opposite foot. So the right trekking pole plants with the left foot. The left pole plants with the right foot. After a while, you're going to find, like, I find myself on downhills and levels. I don't even, I just hold the poles. I don't even put them to the ground. Steeper downhills, I will start to have the pole on its way down to kind of catch myself, particularly if there's a curve at the bottom of a hill. Um, but I don't plant them in the ground and try and do a hard turn. You're just looking to stabilize your body weight. As you run, it's not a normal up with the arms position. You want your hands a little bit lower and a little bit looser than you would if you were on a normal run. The reason is, is you're using those as a counterbalance. Um, with or without trekking poles, that rule still, still applies. You can quickly throw a hand to a side as you're going down and correct you know, your, your, your turn position or your balance position. The other thing is don't forget about this eight pound bowling ball on your head. You can turn it left, you can turn it right. You would be surprised how that helps. Those of you who are kayakers and canoeists have probably already seen the difference of rocking your head while you're running or while you're paddling. It makes a difference in the handling characteristic of the boat. Um, I'm a former kayaker, so I've <laughs> got a lot of experience with that. It's also one of the ones that will save your ass when you have to do a roll in a kayak. Learning to shift your weight, your upper body weight as you go is a big balance key. If you're going to trail run, don't expect to bash out huge, huge miles. You're going to find that a three mile trail run is equivalent to, for me, it's the same as going out and doing five and six miles on flat. Um, I can't run on flat anymore. It is too hard on my joints. I find that trail running is a lot softer, a lot easier on my joints. And it's a lot more fun. There's so much variation. It's not just, oh, I'll pile out the miles. No, it's, it's a lot more fun. Today I saw a deer. Um, she stayed right on the trail. And I walked up past her, scared the living hell out of her. She jumped over and then turned around and looked at me for a minute. I do like these trails that I'm running here because you don't see people out just walking this, this particular trail. It uh, is always either trail runners or mountain bikers, so it does make the trail a lot more entertaining. All right, so we're almost, we're at 27 minutes now. I'm going to cut out a couple minutes here where I got out to get my stick. So there's your, <laughs> there's your quick trail running tips. Again, good shoes made for trail running. 
look for a rock plate. The amount of drop is up to you. I will give you that advice that if you do decide to go with a zero drop shoe, give your time to acclimate to running in this shoe. Um, to running, because you are essentially running with your feet in their natural position. They're not compressed and they're not arched up like they would be in a normal running shoe. Take your time to get used to it. Rock plate, absolutely critical that you have a rock plate. You're going to hurt yourself if you don't. Um, trekking poles, same, same rule applies. Think about how you grab the pole through the strap. You don't necessarily even have to use the strap. Keep the strap loose. It should not be so tight that you cannot have your wrist at a normal angle when holding the pole. Um, there are several different brands where the grip has been adjusted to a more ergonomic position forward. So your wrist is sitting slightly forward instead of so instead of straight up, your wrist would be turned a little bit more. For some people, that is a good level. Um, I don't like that type of grip. I prefer my wrists in that position. The height of the trekking pole itself should be so that your elbow and forearm are parallel with the ground. You don't want it lower so that your elbow is, your forearm is kept down below your joint. You don't want it higher so that your forearm or your hand and wrist are above the elbow joint. You want them level with the ground. That is a proper trekking pole, the proper adjustment. I am five foot eleven and three quarter now. <laughs> I was six foot and three quarter. Um, so for me, the height of the trekking pole is set at 125 centimeters, 1.25 meters. Um, that is the height of the pole. Play with it a little bit. You're going to find if you're doing a lot of uphill, you want a shorter trekking pole anyways. If you're going more downhill, downhill, then you're going to want to extend that pole. I keep mine at the exact same length as I do on level ground because I've been using trekking poles for <laughs> most of my adult life now. So I'm used to that height and my the brain adjustment is automatic as to where I need to place that pole on a given uphill or downhill. I'm just, it's automatic to me. But start with your forearm parallel to the ground. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Practice. Take your time. Slow down. When you're running flat ground, cross country, or on the road, you can look 50 to 100 feet in front of you. When you are trail running, your eyes need to be 12 to 15 feet in front of you. I typically stay three to four paces ahead of myself. So three to four running steps ahead of myself. I'm planning out my footprints. I do the, my footsteps. I do the looking when I'm on uphills, um, longer uphills. It, that's when I take the time to look around and kind of enjoy it because I get the extra few minutes that I'm giving myself a rest. I give my mind a rest by looking around and then top of the hill, flat down, it's game on. I'm running. So that's it. <laughs> See you guys. Thanks for all your feedback. Thanks for all of the support. Love you guys. Be good. Be well.